Hey there, you're looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. The sun beat down mercilessly on the empty parking lot, its rays glinting off the hood of a lonely sedan. A group of dejected young men slouched around a faded banner proclaiming, Charity Car Wash, all proceeds to Delta Epsilon Fraternity. Their hopes of raising funds for a new frat house had been dashed by a steady stream of rejections throughout the morning. This blows, grumbled a lanky redhead, kicking at an overturned bucket. We've been out here for hours and washed, what, two cars? Three if you count Professor Higgins' scooter, another boy chimed in, adjusting his thick-rimmed glasses. The group's de facto leader, a stocky blonde with an easy grin, ran a hand through his hair. Come on, guys, we can't give up now. The house is practically falling apart. If we don't raise some cash soon, the university's gonna shut us down for sure. A collective groan rose from the assembled nerds. They'd been struggling to keep their fraternity afloat for months, but between dwindling membership and mounting repair costs, their options were running out fast. Face it, dude, sighed a wiry boy with a mop of curly hair. No one wants their car washed by a bunch of pasty geeks. We might as well pack it in. The blonde opened his mouth to argue, but was cut off by the revving of an engine. A sleek sports car pulled into the lot, driven by a statuesque blonde. The driver's side window rolled down, revealing a pair of designer sunglasses and a dazzling smile. Hey, boys, she called out. Still doing that car wash? The nerds straightened up immediately, practically tripping over themselves in their eagerness to help. As they swarmed around the vehicle, suds and sponges at the ready, the blonde climbed out and stretched languidly. You know, she drawled, if you really want to bring in customers, you should get some girls out here. With a wink and a wave, she sauntered off, leaving behind a freshly washed car and a group of slack-jawed young men. That's it, exclaimed the bespectacled nerd, snapping his fingers. We need to get girls to help us. The curly-haired boy snorted. Yeah, right. Like any girl on campus would be caught dead helping us losers. A contemplative silence fell over the group. Then, slowly, the blonde's lips curved into a mischievous grin. Who says we need to get girls? He asked. What if we became the girls? His suggestion was met with blank stares and nervous laughter. But as the day wore on and their donation bucket remained stubbornly empty, the idea began to take root. Look, the blonde argued. It's not like we have anything to lose at this point, and it's for a good cause, right? After much debate and more than a little trepidation, the group finally agreed to give it a shot. They packed up their supplies and headed to the nearest thrift store, giggling nervously as they rifled through racks of women's clothing. I can't believe we're actually doing this, muttered the redhead, holding up a floral sundress with a grimace. Just think of it as cosplay, the bespectacled boy offered helpfully, already clutching an armful of skirts and blouses. Armed with their new wardrobes and a hefty dose of YouTube makeup tutorials, the nerds reconvened in their dilapidated frat house. The next few hours were a blur of borrowed wigs, hastily applied mascara, and more than a few wardrobe malfunctions. Ow, how do girls walk in these things? yelped the curly-haired boy, tottering unsteadily in a pair of platform sandals. Forget walking, how do they breathe? wheezed the redhead, tugging at the waistband of his shapewear. Despite their initial fumbling, the transformation was remarkable. Gone were the awkward, gangly boys of that morning. In their place stood a group of surprisingly convincing young women, albeit with a few telltale signs of their true identities. The blonde leader, now sporting flowing chestnut locks and a curve-hugging sundress, surveyed his troops with satisfaction. All right, ladies, he declared in a passable falsetto. Let's go wash some cars. They trooped back to the parking lot, this time with a newfound confidence in their step, wobbly heels notwithstanding. The change in their fortunes was almost immediate. Cars began trickling in, then flooding the lot as word spread about the hot car wash girls on campus. I can't believe this is actually working, 
the bespectacled nerd, now a petite brunette in a polka dot dress, whispered to the others as they scrubbed suds across a pickup truck's hood. Just keep smiling and don't talk too much, the blonde hissed back, flashing a coy grin at a group of passing frat boys. As the afternoon wore on, their technique improved both in car washing and maintaining their feminine personas. They giggled and flirted, batted their fake eyelashes, and slowly but surely, their donation bucket began to fill. Not everything went smoothly, of course. There were a few close calls when overly friendly customers got a bit too handsy, and more than one of the girls nearly blew their cover with a slip of the tongue or an unladylike gesture. But for the most part, their ruse went unchallenged. The sun was beginning to set when a familiar sports car pulled into the lot. The blonde from earlier stepped out, eyebrows raised as she took in the scene before her. Well, well, she mused, a smirk playing at her lips. Looks like you boys took my advice to heart. The nerds froze, caught between panic and embarrassment. But to their surprise, the blonde merely laughed and held out a crisp hundred dollar bill. For creativity, she explained with a wink and for the best damn car wash I've seen all year. As she drove away, the group breathed a collective sigh of relief. They counted their earnings, eyes widening at the impressive sum they'd managed to raise. We did it, the redhead breathed, forgetting to use his feminine voice in his excitement. We actually did it! Their celebration was cut short by the sound of approaching sirens. A police cruiser pulled into the lot, and a stern-faced officer stepped out. We've had some complaints about unauthorized solicitation, he began, then paused, taking in the sight before him. His brow furrowed in confusion. Wait a minute. The nerds exchanged panicked glances, their hearts racing. This was it. They were going to be arrested, expelled, laughed off campus forever. But then, to their astonishment, the officer's face softened into a smile. You girls are doing a great job, he said warmly. Keep up the good work. Just make sure you've got all the proper permits next time, all right? With a friendly wave, he climbed back into his cruiser and drove off, leaving behind a group of stunned and relieved women. As the last traces of daylight faded from the sky, the nerds began packing up their supplies. They were exhausted, sore, and more than ready to shed their feminine alter egos but there was also an undeniable sense of accomplishment in the air. You know, the curly-haired boy mused as they trudged back to the frat house, heels in hand. I think I finally understand why girls travel to the bathroom in packs. These outfits are a nightmare to get in and out of alone. The others laughed, the tension of the day finally breaking. They may not have solved all their problems, but they'd taken a big step towards saving their fraternity. And if they'd learned a thing or two about walking in heels along the way, well, that was just an unexpected bonus. Back at the house, they gathered in the living room, still in their feminine attire, but with makeup smudged and wigs askew. The blonde leader stood before them, holding up the bulging donation bucket with pride. Gentlemen, he began, then caught himself with a grin. And ladies, we did it. We raised enough money to start the repairs on the house and keep the frat going for another semester. A cheer went up from the group, quickly followed by a chorus of good-natured ribbing and joking about their day in drag. As the night wore on, they found themselves sharing stories and laughing more freely than they had in months. You know, the bespectacled nerd said thoughtfully, absently twirling a strand of his wig, I think we learned something important today. Yeah, snorted the redhead. Never underestimate the power of a push-up bra. The room erupted in laughter again, but the bespectacled boy shook his head. No, I mean it. We took a risk, stepped out of our comfort zones, and it paid off. Maybe that's what we've been missing all along. A contemplative silence fell over the group. They'd started the day as a bunch of misfits on the verge of losing everything. Now they were closer than ever, united by their shared experience and newfound confidence. So, the curly-haired boy piped up, a mischievous glint in his eye. Same time next week. 
The room exploded with groans and thrown pillows, but underneath the protests, there was a current of excitement. They'd found a winning formula, after all. And who knew? Maybe their next fundraiser would involve something even more outrageous. As the night wore on and the boys finally began to shed their feminine disguises, there was a palpable sense of change in the air. They may have started this journey as a desperate attempt to save their fraternity, but they'd ended up discovering new sides of themselves along the way. The blonde leader, last to remove his wig, gazed around at his friends with a mixture of pride and affection. Well, boys, he said, his voice rough with exhaustion but filled with warmth. I'd say this calls for a toast. They raised their glasses, mostly empty soda cans and water bottles, in a haphazard salute. To Delta Epsilon, the blonde declared. May our brotherhood always be strong enough to weather any storm, even if it means trading our jerseys for sundresses once in a while. The laughter and cheers faded into a comfortable silence as the exhausted fraternity brothers lounged around their shabby living room. Despite the late hour, none seemed eager to call it a night. The day's events had forged a new bond between them, one that felt too precious to break just yet. You know, mused the bespectacled nerd, now freed from his brunette wig, but still absently fiddling with the hem of his polka dot dress. I never thought I'd say this, but I'm actually gonna miss being Stacy a little bit. The redhead snorted, sprawled across a threadbare armchair with his shapewear discarded in a nearby corner. Speak for yourself, dude. I won't miss these torture devices for a second. He gestured dramatically at the pile of abandoned heels and padded bras. Aw, oh, come on, teased the curly-haired boy, his mascara smudged but grin still firmly in place. You can't tell me you didn't feel a little fabulous strutting your stuff out there. The room erupted in good-natured ribbing and exaggerated imitations of their feminine alter egos. But beneath the laughter, there was an undercurrent of something else, a newfound confidence that hadn't been there before. The blonde leader, lounging on the worn sofa with his chestnut wig tossed carelessly over the back, watched his brothers with a mixture of pride and amusement. All right, all right, he said, raising his hands to quiet the group. Before we get too carried away, let's talk about our next move. A hush fell over the room as the reality of their situation sank back in. They'd bought themselves some time, but the fraternity was still far from secure. We could always do another car wash, suggested the bespectacled nerd, adjusting his glasses, which sat slightly askew on his makeup-smeared face. The curly-haired boy groaned. No offense, but if I never see another sponge again, it'll be too soon. What about a bake sale? offered the redhead, then immediately grimaced. Never mind, we'd probably burn down the kitchen before we managed to frost a single cupcake. Ideas were tossed back and forth, each more outlandish than the last. A dunk tank featuring the university's least popular professors. A midnight scavenger hunt across campus. A rent-a-nerd tutoring service with a twist all tutors required to dress in full cosplay. As the night wore on and the suggestions grew increasingly ridiculous, the blonde leader found himself struck by a realization. It wasn't just about the money anymore. Something fundamental had shifted within the group. Guys, he said, cutting through the chatter. I think we're missing the point here. The room fell silent, all eyes turning to their de facto leader. Look at us, he continued, gesturing around the room. 24 hours ago, we were ready to throw in the towel. Now we're sitting here planning our next big adventure like it's the most natural thing in the world. The others nodded slowly, realization dawning on their faces. Maybe saving the fraternity isn't about finding the perfect fundraiser, the blonde mused. Maybe it's about rediscovering what brought us together in the first place. A thoughtful silence settled over the group. They'd joined Delta Epsilon for different reasons, some seeking friendship, others a sense of belonging, and a few simply looking for a place to live. But somewhere along the way, they'd lost sight of what made their brotherhood special. So what are you saying? Asked the bespectacled nerd, leaning forward with interest. We just keep doing crazy stuff until we figure it out? The blonde grinned. Why not? 
It worked today, didn't it? We took a risk, stepped out of our comfort zones, and look what happened. We raised money, sure, but more importantly, we had fun. We worked together. We supported each other. And we looked damn good doing it, quipped the curly-haired boy, earning a round of laughter. Exactly, the blonde nodded. So maybe that's our new mission. Not just to save the fraternity, but to reinvent it. To make Delta Epsilon a place where we can be ourselves. Whoever that might be. The energy in the room shifted, a spark of excitement igniting in each pair of eyes. They weren't just planning fundraisers anymore. They were reimagining their entire future. We could host themed parties, suggested the redhead, warming to the idea. Not just boring keggers, but like full-on immersive experiences. And workshops, chimed in the bespectacled nerd, teaching each other our weird hobbies and skills. I could do a class on lockpicking. Ideas flowed freely now, each more creative than the last. A Delta Epsilon podcast showcasing their diverse interests. A weekly transformation challenge where members stepped into someone else's shoes for a day. A secret society dedicated to spreading joy and mischief across campus. As the first light of dawn began to creep through the shabby curtains, the fraternity brothers of Delta Epsilon found themselves energized despite their exhaustion. They had a long road ahead, filled with challenges and likely more than a few mishaps. But for the first time in months, the future looked bright. All right, gentlemen, the blonde leader said, rising to his feet and smoothing down his rumpled sundress. I think it's time we got some sleep. We've got a lot of work to do tomorrow. As they began to disperse, gathering up scattered wigs and makeup brushes, the curly-haired boy paused in the doorway. Hey! he called out, a mischievous grin spreading across his face. Does this mean we get to keep the dresses? The room erupted in laughter and playful shoves, the sound echoing through the old house like a promise of things to come. Delta Epsilon was changing, evolving into something new and exciting. And while they might not know exactly what the future held, they were ready to face it together, with open minds, brave hearts, and maybe just a touch of lipstick. In the weeks and months that followed, the nerds of Delta Epsilon threw themselves into their reinvention with gusto. Their car wash escapade became the stuff of campus legend, whispered about in dorm rooms and retold with increasing embellishment at parties. But it was what came after that truly set them apart. They hosted wildly popular themed events from a mad scientist mixer, complete with bubbling beakers of neon cocktails, to a time traveler's ball where guests arrived dressed as visitors from different eras. Their weekly transformation challenges became a viral sensation on campus. Students would gather in the quad, phones at the ready, to see which Delta Epsilon brother would emerge from the house in full costume. Sometimes it was as simple as swapping majors for a day, the computer science nerd struggling through a contemporary dance class while the theater geek debugged code. Other times, it was more elaborate, like the week they all embodied different breakfast cereals, much to the bewilderment and delight of their professors. The fraternity house itself underwent a transformation. What had once been a crumbling eyesore became a vibrant hub of creativity. Each room was themed to reflect the interests of its occupants. A steampunk workshop in the basement, a mini planetarium in the attic, a hybrid science lab kitchen where culinary experiments of dubious edibility were constantly underway. As their reputation grew, so did their numbers. Misfits and oddballs from all corners of campus found their way to Delta Epsilon's door, drawn by the promise of acceptance and the freedom to be unapologetically themselves. It wasn't always smooth sailing, of course. There were misunderstandings with the administration, failed experiments that left the house smelling like burnt rubber for days, and the occasional identity crisis as members pushed their boundaries perhaps a bit too far. But through it all, the core group that had started it all with a desperate car wash remained tight-knit. They'd seen each other at their most vulnerable, hidden behind wigs and mascara, and forged a bond that couldn't be broken. One year to the day after their fateful fundraiser, the original group gathered in the living room once more. 
The space had changed, now cluttered with half-finished inventions, costume pieces, and an eclectic mix of furniture. But the feeling of camaraderie was stronger than ever. The blonde leader, still their guiding force, though he'd long since traded his flowing wig for a more practical shortcut, raised a glass. To Delta Epsilon, he said, his voice full of pride. And to never being afraid to reinvent ourselves. As they clinked their glasses together, a motley assortment of beakers, mason jars, and what might have been a repurposed fish bowl, each member felt a surge of gratitude. They'd set out to save their fraternity and ended up finding themselves in the process. The bespectacled nerd, pushing his glasses up with a finger that was stained with what looked suspiciously like rocket fuel, cleared his throat. So, he said, a mischievous glint in his eye, Anyone up for another car wash, for old time's sake? The suggestion was met with a barrage of thrown pillows and good-natured groans. But underneath the protests, there was a current of excitement. After all, who knew what adventures the next crazy idea might bring? As the night wore on and plans for their next big event took shape, the brothers of Delta Epsilon knew one thing for certain. Whatever the future held, they'd face it together with creativity, courage, and just maybe a pair of heels tucked away for emergencies. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Patreon for a lot more content and early access to YouTube videos.